in session and called to order. Reince Priebus arrived at the White House as a key player in the Tea Party movement and the first chairman of the Republican Party to win three consecutive terms. In the year before Trump's nomination to the presidential ticket, he had been a critic of then-candidate Donald Trump's rhetoric about Muslims and immigration. Reince is really a star, and he is the hardest working guy. By all appearances, Trump and Priebus had mended their relationship by the time of the election. Get over here, Reince. And Priebus became chief of staff in President Trump's White House. But there were rumblings that Trump had structured the White House in a way that seemed to undermine Priebus's authority from day one. Several administration positions that were usually managed by the chief of staff now reported directly to Trump. Also, Priebus and chief strategist Steve Bannon served as equal partners under the president. Speaking at a conservative gathering, Bannon and Priebus denied there was ongoing tension between them. I think the biggest mi misconception is everything that you're reading. Behind the scenes, conflicts at the White House boiled over with the selection of Anthony Scaramucci as White House communications director. His selection, opposed by Priebus, was followed immediately by the resignation of White House spokesman Sean Spicer. Several days later, Scaramucci tweeted that someone had illegally hacked financial information about him, conspicuously mentioning Priebus's Twitter handle. Scaramucci later deleted that tweet and said he had only mentioned Priebus to show that all senior leaders are taking the leak crackdown seriously. These and other thinly veiled tensions behind the scenes at the White House took their toll and in the end contributed to his departure. Walter Ratliff, The Associated Press.